Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Next by Michael Crichton. So, Michael Crichton, the author of Jurassic Park. This is like a technological thriller, I suppose, from I think, I want to say 2007, 2008. Let's have a look at the copyright page, see what it says. 2000, oh, this edition, 2007, first published 2006. So it's relatively recent, um, and because of that, one of the things that I've found with, quite, uh, with Crichton quite a lot is that... Um, he writes about like cutting edge technology, but it was about, it was cutting edge when he was writing the book in 1980 or whatever, you know? So uh, anyway, I'm gonna read you the blurb, then we're gonna go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. Is a loved one missing body parts? Are blondes becoming extinct? Has a human already crossbred with a monkey? We live in a genetic world, fast, frightening, and potentially very lucrative. There are designer pets, a genetic cure for drug addiction, a booming market in eggs and sperm, but is there also a talking ape in Borneo? Has a master gene for controlling others been found? Could an innocent man and his family be hunted cross-country because they happen to have certain valuable genes? Are you ready for what comes next in Michael Crichton's stunning new thriller? Well, let's see what happens next. Now, um, I want to start by this little bit of bio. Um, just specifically, I thought this was a very cool fact. Um, uh, so as well as being the creator of the TV series ER, he's the only person to have had at the same time the number one book, movie and TV show in the United States. Very cool. So I like the introduction to this. It says, this novel is fiction, except for the parts that aren't. Which is surely true of like every novel, right? We get a reference to a Me Too piece um, about someone who's been victimized. And I just thought that was interesting because this was obviously written before the Me Too movement, you know? And this little line I thought was very good. Uh, he glanced down at the papers in front of him and the business card. Richard Rick Deal, PhD. Barry frowned unhappily. Only assholes put a nickname on the card. This kind of reminds me of um, American Psycho and all the observations on business cards there. Um, and then there's a talking monkey in this, which is apparently um, like a, a running theme because I've recently read Congo by Michael Crichton and there was a monkey in that that could talk with sign language. So it's just weird that two of his books both feature talking primates, you know? So there's this great um, conversation here uh, between Charlie, Hig Charlie Huggins sorry, and his wife. Um, and I'm just going to read you out this, this little bit of dialogue because it's very funny. Get this, Charlie Huggins said, looking at the television in the kitchen of his house in San Diego. The sound was turned off, but he was reading the crawl beneath. It says, Talking Ape sighted in Sumatra. You mean it got a speeding ticket, his wife said, glancing at the screen. She was making breakfast. No, Huggins said, they must mean the ape was sighted with an S. The ape was sighted, meaning the ape could see. His wife was a high school English teacher. She liked these jokes. No, honey, the story says... Some people in Sumatra encountered an ape in the jungle that talked. I thought apes can't talk, his wife said. Well, that's what the story says. So it has to be a lie. You think? Uh, now, Britney Spears is not getting divorced. I'm relieved. She may be pregnant again. From the pictures, it looks like it. And Posh Spice wore a nice green dress to a gala. And Sting says you can have sex for eight hours without stopping. Scrambled or over easy, his wife said. Tantric, apparently. I mean your eggs. And we get this interesting thing as well, um, basically um, a dude dies and um, his daughter gets a paternity test run and um, the wife of the deceased, Mr John J Weller, is suing us for an authorised release of tissue to the daughter. What's the legal situation, Marty Roberts said. Unclear, McCormick said. Legal says the daughter is a family member and has a clear right to be given tissues to test for diseases that may affect her. Problem is, she did a paternity test and it came back negative, so she's not his daughter. Arguably that makes our release of tissues unauthorised. So it's kind of funny, like, she, they release it to her because she was the daughter, and then she accidentally proved that she wasn't the daughter, and so then they shouldn't have released the DNA to her, but they wouldn't have been able to because they didn't know that she wasn't the daughter. We get a reference to two of the biggest amusement parks in the world, Sandusky in the US and Blackpool in England. And I didn't know, I'm, I'm still not sure about that, that Blackpool is one of the biggest, like, because I wouldn't have thought it was even the biggest in the UK. I would have thought like Alton Towers or Thorpe Park were bigger than Blackpool. The, specifically the amusement park. I mean, maybe if you include all of the illuminations and stuff that are there. We get a sweeping generalisation here. Marty started thinking about a 46 year old bodybuilder. Guy that age, grown family. Works his ass off to get a body like that. There's only two reasons. He's gay or he's got a girlfriend. Either way, he's not humping his wife. So how does she feel about that? Pissed off? 
and the question is, would she be pissed off enough to try and kill him? And uh, one of the things that Crichton does throughout this is we have like um, reproductions of emails and press releases and stuff. So we have um, MIT scientists have grown a human ear and tissue culture for the first time. Last year, the same MIT lab made steaks of frog tissue grown over biopolymer mesh. They had also grown steak from the cells of an unborn sheep, and they created what they referred to as victimless leather. This was skin that had been artificially grown in the laboratory and was suitable for shoes, purses, belts and other leather goods, presumably with an eye to the robust vegan market. But I'm not convinced about that. I mean, I'm vegan, and I would still avoid leather even if it was grown cruelty-free in a lab or whatever. Um, I would have imagined there'd be more of a market there for people who did eat meat but were trying to cut down and stuff like that, you know? I mean, I do use vegan leather but it's made out of pineapples and stuff. And it, it does the job just fine. And we get another one of these sort of legal quandaries around uh, genetics, so... We get, uh, anyway, the son is saying he did not authorise the release of genetic information about himself, which is true. But if we release the father's information, as we're required by state law to do, we also release the sons, which, re which we're required by law not to do. Because his children share half the same genes as the father, one way or another we break the law. And then we get this idea, someone is talking about using like genetics for advertising, so uh, he's presenting his case here. On the screen, the reef scene was suddenly branded. Coral branches had lettering that read BP Clean. A school of small fish wriggled by, each winking Vodafone, Vodafone. A slithering shark with Cadbury curving across the snout. A puffer fish with Lloyd's TSB group in black lettering swam over convoluted heads of brain coral with Scottish power printed along the ridges in orange. And finally, a moray eel poked its head out of a hole. Its greenish skin pattern said Marks and Spencer. Think of the possibilities, Cuss said. Ugh, horrible. And his argument would be that the brands would actually be paying for the conservation of the species that they sponsored, you know? We get a bit of French here and there. Alors, merde, which means so shit. A great quote, life is hard, but it's harder if you're stupid. And then um, we get some liposuction news. Prime Minister's fat sells for $18,000. BBC News, a bar of soap made from fat liposuction from Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has been sold for $18,000 to a private collector. The soap is a work of art entitled Mani Pulite, Clean Hands, made by the artist Gianni Motti, who is based in Switzerland. Motti bought the fat from a clinic in Lugano, where Berlusconi had the liposuction performed. Motti then moulded it into a bar of soap, which sold at the Basel Art Fair to a private Swiss collector who can now wash his hands with Berlusconi. And then he talks about like the possibility for celebrities who have liposuction to donate their fat to auctions for similar things to raise money from charity for charities. Which is an interesting idea. I don't know if it's ever panned out, you know? But yeah, that's about all I have to share for me for my tabs for Next by Michael Crichton. Overall, it was... Um, Pretty good, uh, like, technological thriller. Um, again, mostly focusing on genes and gene therapy. It could be a little dated here and there in parts, but overall I still thought it held up well. And Crichton's just a good writer in general, you know? So I gave it a pretty, pretty, pretty middle of the road 3.5 out of 5. Would recommend it if it sounds like the subject matters are something you'd be um, interested in. The characterization was also good. The talking monkey was actually quite a cool character as well, even though I do find it weird that that um, Crichton keeps writing about talking monkeys, but hey-ho. And uh, yeah, would recommend. So there we have it, that's what I made of Next by Michael Crichton. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.